Ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott Pollack, Chief Editor of the Critical Post Chicago Reporting. Welcome to another edition of the Critical Post Chicago Report. Thanks again for tuning us in, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate it. This edition of the Critical Post Chicago Report is coming to you live, or almost live, from the capital of the Midwest Coast, Chicago, Illinois, USA. This is part four of the definitive bullet point series regarding the mass shootings at the Mandalay Bay. Uh, I want to delve just a little bit into Paddock's autopsy. Now, in the FIT report, that came out in January. They had a section in that FIT report. It was a real small section uh, that gave maybe a page or a page and a half of part of the autopsy, of Paddock's autopsy. Uh, as I said earlier, the sub- subsequently in February, I think February 10th or 11th, they released Paddock's full-blown autopsy. Uh and it was it, it was very interesting because there were several issues that were immediate. One of the issues that was immediate was the eye color. In the fit report, it gave his eye color as brown. In the final autopsy, it said his uh, described the eye color as light. And there was a fishing license, and of course, in most of the pictures that you see of Paddock or who is represented to be Paddock, his eyes are blue. Uh, the height height of the deceased was other also another issue um the fit report and the final autopsy say the uh the body was 6-1 um the fishing license the two fishing licenses from alaska that that paddock supposedly filled out were 6-4 i think it was common knowledge the paddock was 6-4 so we had a discrepancy there uh then the next thing which is just uh, just mind-boggling they they gave the time of death for t- paddock as noon on monday now this this is the most curious one of all of them because we we researched the um, search warrants and they executed search warrants on the mesquite property they executed search warrants at the reno property they executed search warrants for the um, vehicle they executed search warrants for 134 and 135 so in these search warrants the officer who is a, who is filling out the affidavit for the application of the search warrant, which then goes to a judge and a judge approves it. In those search warrants, the officers describe breaching the room and uh, finding Paddock dead. Well, it, it, the 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 stories vary. One of the uh, one of the search warrants indicates that um, they they breached the room when they came into the room. They observed Paddock put a gun to his head and pull the trigger. Uh, there was uh, most of the rest of the search warrants indicated that they were, that he was dead when they found him, um, from an apparent gunshot wound. Uh, and there's also a report that was given to CNN, uh, that when they breached the room, Paddock charged them, scuffled with an officer, there were shots exchanged and they killed Paddock. So I guess on this one, you take your pick, but no matter which version of the story that you take, Paddock was dead by 11:20 on uh, October 1st. Why they put October 2nd, noon October 2nd is 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 beyond. Uh, it's just beyond you know <laughs> comprehension. Um, and some of the some of the dates, some of the times of death were questionable. They had 
they left 20 bodies supposedly out at the concert, and they listed their time of death for 20 of the deceased victims that were at the concert, in the inside the concert grounds. They listed their time of death at 545. Uh, there were, I believe, then 11 additional bodies that were located outside the concert venue. They listed their time of death at 545 the next morning. So Paddock, um, even though they found him dead at 1120 at night, they don't list his time of death till noon the next day, which is just, just very curious. Uh, the, the autopsy for Paddock basically uh, says, in the, one of the first line almost says, that, that it's tentative. This is Stephen T. Paddock, meaning T means tentative. So they were tentatively identifying him as Stephen Paddock, and this was done on October 6th. And interestingly enough, I go back to the search warrants. They were all able to identify him. Not only did they identify him, they put his date of birth out. Uh, they put his social security number out and they gave in the search warrants how they identified him. Yet when they do the autopsy on the 6th, they're unsure whether it's Stephen Paddock. In the autopsy report, they do indicate that he, they, that the identity has been something to the effect that the identity has been, uh, has been confirmed by fingerprints. Now, this brings up another issue. Um, because they say that Paddock had never been arrested. So uh, theoretically, he should have never been fingerprinted because you can't get you can't match fingerprints up to someone unless they've already been fingerprinted for something for an arrest or they had to do a background to get a license where they have to uh, do a print card, send it to the FBI or the state police, whoever the sort of the governing body is to, that's how they that's how they check for the uh, uh, the record. Uh, that's how they do a background in some cases. Well, anyway, so the only other thing that I can think of where they would possibly have had his fingerprints are if he had gone under the uh, Department of Homeland Security. I, I don't even remember what it's called, but there's if you want to get through the airport lines fast, you can get pre. Uh, backgrounded, so to speak. And so what you have to do is you do have to submit your fingerprints for that. Now, I don't know whether Paddock ever did that or not, but I read the um, FBI website and they, cl they claim that they just use those fingerprints to check to see if you have a record for that particular uh, function. And then they destroy the fingerprints. So in theory, what I'm saying is the FBI should not have any fingerprints of Paddock that they could match to to identify him. So the whole the whole Paddock autopsy is is very suspect. Then uh, if you want to take that a step further, of course, the body was cremated. There's been some controversy about that. Eric Paddock wanted uh, wanted the uh, coroner to send the remains to him in Florida. Eric Paddock finally had to fly to Las Vegas and pick him up. Himself, it was a big, you know, it was a big scene. Eric Paddock, um, you know, was was having trouble with Funderburg, uh, and it's interesting that after they did the autopsies for the 58 victims, he released that manner that that names and manner of death report on December uh, 21st, which was the same day that they cremated Paddock's body. So obviously, we can't ever go back and look. So now, the preservation of evidence aspect of this has been completely destroyed. Uh, in terms of the chain of evidence regarding uh, this investigation because his body was destroyed on December, what did you say, December 21st. 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 Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so we so you know, you can't we can't go dig up Stephen Paddock and do another autopsy to make sure that was him. Now, interestingly enough, and I know everybody probably has seen these pictures, but um, initially after the event, there were pictures that were, uh, released that show Paddock laying there. It's a headshot, uh, which has been controversial because, um, it appears as if there's two pools of blood. Um, there's also the second shot of the tripod or the, uh, yeah, the tripod with a gun laying over his left foot, which, you know, everybody won wonders how that could happen. Um, and then, there is, and initially there were some reports that he was shot in the chest, 
And in, in one of those pictures that were leaked that I don't know that they've ever run down who leaked that, although Lombardo was asked that early on in a press conference and he came back and said, oh, we're, we're looking into that. We're going to run that down. I'm very disturbed by that, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then we have, no, we have not heard anything since then. Uh, in that picture of the headshot of, of the headshot of, pa, of Paddock, it appears as if his chest is is dark. It looks like there could be blood on his chest. So it looks like there could have been a chest wound. So there's all kinds of controversy around Paddock's autopsy. Of course, uh, they you know they haven't talked about it, and the whole thing is the media has not gotten into it and done their job um, through all of this either. Again, this is Scott Pollock, Chief Editor of the Critical Post Chicago Reporting. Thanks again for watching another edition of the Critical Post Chicago Report. Coming to you live or almost live from the capital of the Midwest Coast, Chicago, Illinois, USA. That is all.